Are we in a commodity super cycle? What is a commodity super cycle? I don't use that word super cycle lightly because there have only been four super cycles in the past 120 years, which I'll get to the details later on in the video. But for now, a super cycle affects you and me big time because it means big inflation. I mean, everything now that we touch, that we eat, what we wear will get way more expensive. So in this video, we're going to talk about the commodity super cycle that will affect you and I, whether we know, ignore or care about it at all. And it also means that this is an investment game changer because this super cycle backdrop will entirely change how we should invest. I'll show you three methods that you need to change in your investment portfolio so you are not unprepared for the super cycle. And as a bonus, at the end of the video, I'll show you a chart so simple that will be crazy for you to not agree with me at all. So if you want to know, keep watching. Just in the past few months, we saw major commodities like copper prices climbing above $10,000 a ton, which is a level not seen since 2011. And iron ore, another major commodity reaching nearly $200 a ton. And lumber prices, which I talk more about in this video here and its effect on housing prices has also reached a record high at $1,500. That is lumber prices has increased five times in the past 13 months. I'm about to give you my very clear view. We just have to explain a few things first just to give you a better context and you really need to hear me out because it will affect your financial well-being if you don't do anything but first let's talk about three things one what commodities are two what super cycles are and three the most important point is don't forget to hit that like button because it would really help this channel grow and helps tells me I should keep making more videos like this. So commodities are basically raw materials, things you find in a supermarket, milk, chicken, pork, or are commodities or things that we actually eat and consume. Then there are of course other commodities that we have in the house that we really would die without but really hate paying. Gas, petrol, these are all energy related commodities. Then another big type of commodity is when you go to a manufacturing warehouse, you find all sorts of metals and non-metal things from aluminium, concrete, steel, and copper. So these are all you know, industrial type of commodities. So copper is the big and crazy one because it's so central to the global economy. Like literally no one really teaches you this in school, not even in my MBA. I mean, it's crazy. And if you take one thing away from this video, it's this. You gotta learn about the importance of copper because copper is used in every component inside an electric vehicle and its ecosystem. You know, from the motor, the battery, the inverter, energy storage, and the wiring. But anyways, this isn't really a deep dive copper video, but maybe I should do one later. So what I want to say is that there's many types of commodities, but the big broad categories are energy, metals and industrials, and agriculture and livestock. So energy powers a society, materials is what we use to build our society and agriculture is ones that feeds our society and all these commodities can be traded on the financial markets whether it's with futures forwards or spot financial instruments so i won't go into those financial instruments too deeply in this video because it's really like a whole jam-packed video content in itself but to provide a simple example of why people use to trade commodities in the financial markets is to do something today in the context of responding to some level of risk. So here's what I mean. So let's say there's a corn farmer, right? The farmer is about to harvest some corn in six months. So the farmer could enter into a futures corn contract that settles in six months time. And what this means is it's really a contract to deliver corn in six months. So just that the useful thing for the farmer is that he or she is able to lock in a price today that he or she will sell the corn in six months time. So it's rather than leaving it to chance, because God knows what would happen in half a year's time, it really helps reduce uncertainty because you have the price today, which helps reduce the risk. So let's move on and talk about the commodities super cycle. So a super cycle is a continuous, almost one directional price movement of commodities, you know, whether it's up or down. But we usually just care about the going up part of the cycle because you know, as users or consumers, no one really complains when things go cheaper. And super cycles aren't really like one month trend or one year trend or even two years in time frame. The super cycle time frame is in decades. So it's 10 years or more. And what we know from history, it is always caused by something very significant, some change at a big 
global world level type of events. And you see what I mean in a minute. And this change is when demand or supply of a commodities are severely out of sync. So as in it's clear that one is more than the other, but they just simply can't catch up with each other. So and super cycles have happened four times in the past 120 years. So the first commodity cycle, the uptrend, really happened between the 1890s to around 1917. So this was basically a time where America rapidly industrialized and urbanized. So a huge source of demand because they had to build, build and build. Then at the end of the super cycle also came World War I, which was then more building up for the war effort. So the second commodity cycle started somewhere during the Great Depression, the 1930s. Then it lasted all the way to the 1950s. So here it, we saw World War II. Again, it was build, build and build. And another significant world level event, we saw Germany and Japan had massive rebuilding efforts from war. So commodity demand went through the roof. So this is what a super cycle graph looks like. So this is a multi-decade graph of the super cycle. And then look what happened here. This part is the third commodity super cycle and it started around the 1960s and it went through to 1980. So energy commodities was the big driver. The oil crisis in the 1970s, again, big world events. Then don't forget during this period, Japan was growing super fast. Its economic GDP grew 10% year after year and it soon became the third biggest economy after the US and the Soviet Union. The fourth commodity cycle was when China entered the WTO, which is the World Trade Organization. And a story which we're very familiar with today is China is now the world's second largest economy. And this cycle more or less stopped sometime around the great financial crisis in 2008. So again, it was marked by a big global event. So here's what you really need to care about most now. Are we in the next one. If we are, then investment knowledge that you have been hearing from the past few years from financial media or advisors really needs a rethink because we were in a downward cycle of the commodity super cycle. But now that assumption might not be the case anymore if we're turning. We know that the multi-decade super cycles happen when supply and demand are very out of sync. But what we really need to focus and care more right now is about the demand side because bringing in new supply of commodities anyhow is usually very slow. So it's not like setting up a website or a retail store, you know, bringing up a new copper supply. Like you have to you know, find the mine, you have to get the license, build the infrastructure in place, hire people, dig it up, process it. So something like a setting up a new copper mine takes around eight years before that copper from that mine goes on the market. So what's the demand side? What's the story? So we have been ramping up the economy. Now as countries, at least the big two, America and China, are well on its way and succeeding in their population vaccination efforts. So you have spending literally from business and consumers that was quite you know, held back pretty much for the past 15 months. And that equals to a lot of build, build, build to anticipate that spend, spend, spend when everyone's free to do so. Then there's a big US infrastructure plan. So there's $2 trillion that will be debated in Congress to build infrastructure. So again, it's about build, build, build. And remember, that's what drove the first super cycle in the 1890s in America. So then there's also the green electrification of the world, the Paris Agreement goals, capping emissions at 2030, 2050, 2060. This is a multi-decade society infrastructure transition that requires many countries to build, build, and build. So there's multi-demand stories that is happening at the global scale. Prices will move up. But even though we hear that governments and central banks say it won't be a problem, they can't really see inflation, there's no inflation. Well, of course, if you see things like this, you can't really see much of anything. So, but what I'm telling you additionally is we are highly likely on the verge of the next super cycle. And you really need to be prepared because what you need to do, if you buy my side of the story, is that you need to challenge and rethink some of the investment wisdom you've heard and used in the past 10 or 20 years when there was no super cycle. So the first problem is the 50-50 stock bond portfolio that's been widely advocated in the past few years. So that is allocating some money in stocks and some in fixed income. Now that is now hugely disadvantageous because bonds have no chance to protect you from this super cycle. Now all that interest income that you receive in your bonds will be eaten away by the inflationary costs coming from the rising commodity prices in the super cycle and also as well as interest rates rise. Meaning your existing bonds will also drop in value. Because if you need a bit more insight about why this is the case then you can watch this this video later for the explanation. I've also left the links of that video in the descriptions below. So check it out when you're free. Pause and think before you allocate any more bonds or bond ETFs as part of your long-term investment strategy. Because if I was in that position with that 50-50 allocation position and I'm a growth bias investor, I would reduce my bond holdings to zero. And the second thing is be aware of how much cash is in your investment portfolio. Because I'll be actively 
thinking about how to reduce that cash level. And no, not by spending it to buy iPhones, smart TVs, or Teslas. Because right now, all signs are pointing to somewhere that we are at the beginning of the super cycle. You know, commodities are about to get more and more expensive. Which leads me to the third point. So you need to start taking a look at allocating some of your investment money in commodities or companies that make money selling commodities or commodity related ETFs. Now, I also have more information on ETFs in this video with descriptions below. And no, I don't mean precious metals like gold, which does well in inflation, which has its own merits and its use case, but more on industrial metals or energy commodities that will benefit majorly by the build, build, build over this multi-decade trend. So we've seen this occur again and again. Building and building, they are the major structural factors that drove previous commodity super cycles, and it's not going to be any too different for the next one. You know, just that, the challenging thing is, no one knows, including myself, of predicting which of the commodity categories, you know, whether it's agriculture and livestock, energy or materials, what will go up most, and when that explosion will happen. Still not convinced? But here's the best part. If you're still watching this, that makes it well worth it for you. So you need to look at this graph. So what we are looking at is the ratio comparing the price levels of stocks versus commodities. So if it's a very high level, you know, around here, it means that commodities are priced very high and we're at the super cycle peak. And it's very low, it means stocks are priced high and commodities are low. So the lowest point of the super cycle. So we're now here this circled part, this circling part, and that means stocks are priced highly versus commodities. So the commodities to equities ratio is very low, especially after the outstanding stock market performance after the March 2020 COVID crash last year. So and look, each time the ratio is around here at a low point, we do get a super cycle. So in the 1970s, that was a factor of the oil embargo by OPEC and Japan, the economy was growing super fast. Then in the 2000s around here, it was marked by China joining the WTO. And that was the start of the next super cycle. And now in 2021, we're here now. Now I can't promise history will repeat itself, but as a smart man once said, history doesn't repeat exactly, but it rhymes. Like always, thanks for watching this video. If you learned something, do hit that like button because that will really help this channel grow. And if you think it's valuable for others to learn about this commodity super cycle, share it with your friends, share this video with your family because they need to be aware of this as well because it's going to affect them. And if you're new here, do subscribe because I make beginner-friendly videos on finance, investing, and money topics updated weekly. I click the bell so you don't miss out the next newest video to get smarter in finance. So thanks for watching, happy investing, and I'll see you in the next video.